In this video, I'll cover the Interactive Fill and Smart Fill tools. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial. Both fill tools can be found on the toolbox by default in the last icon. Clicking the small arrow in the lower right corner of this icon opens the fill tools flyout. I'll start with the interactive fill tool, which can also be activated by the G shortcut. This tool has several different types of fills, each of which will be demonstrated with different objects. First, I'll click the object that I want to fill. In the property bar, I'll choose the uniform fill option, which applies the current fill color. I can click the fill color dropdown and choose a different color, or I could use the eyedropper to sample a color anywhere in Corel Draw or on my desktop. The uniform fill option is equivalent to left clicking a color swatch from any palette or dragging a swatch inside the object. And the equivalent to applying the no color fill is the no fill option in the property bar. I'll go back to uniform fill. With the object still selected, I can click the fountain fill icon to apply a gradient, which proceeds by default from the last used uniform fill color to white along a horizontal line. I'll go back to Uniform Fill and demonstrate another way to apply Fountain Fill by clicking and dragging. This way I choose where to start the gradient from the original fill color, where the gradient should become the second color, and the angle between the two colors. Clicking a color swatch replaces the white color, or I can click either Fountain Fill control handle to change its color, or reduce its transparency. I can also drag a swatch from a palette directly onto a control handle, drag either control handle to move the gradient start or end, drag the slider to adjust the rate of change, or drag the circular handle to change the gradient angle. To add more color changes, I can drag swatches directly onto the contour bar. Any of these new handles can be dragged to adjust the color progression, and double-clicking a handle along the control bar removes the handle. The property bar has options to reverse gradient direction, repeat, or repeat and mirror, and smooth transitions. I can also switch to elliptical, conical, or rectangular fill. There are also several preset fills in the Fill Picker dropdown, any of which can be adjusted. More fountain fills can be downloaded from Corel by clicking the Get More icon. In the window that opens, in addition to fountain fills, there are also downloads for bitmap and vector fill bundles. I can also pre-select objects to fill. With the Pick tool active, I'll hold Shift while selecting two shapes, then activate Interactive Fill. This time I'll apply a vector pattern fill. I can find new patterns in the dropdown, use the handles to change pattern size and angle, there are options to mirror tiles horizontally or vertically, and the Edit Fill icon opens a window in which I can set exact pattern values or choose my own pattern image. This window is available for all fill types, each of which have their own settings. To copy a fill from one object to another, I'll first click the object I want to fill, then click the Copy Fill icon, and click the fill I want to apply. The Properties Docker, or Properties Inspector on the Mac, can be opened by choosing Window, Dockers, Properties. While an object is selected, the Fill tab displays all fill properties that can be edited, which are the same properties that appear on the Edit Fill window. Bitmap Fill is similar to Vector Pattern Fill, and I can use my own bitmap image. And there is a variety of two color fill patterns I can choose from, and the two colors can also be set in the property bar. There are also a number of texture fills, which work like bitmaps and vectors, and textures can be mirrored and regenerated. For postscript fills, there are a number of patterns to choose from, and the Edit Fill window for each postscript fill has options depending on the pattern itself. For objects with thick outlines, fills can be applied to the outline if it's converted to an object. In this example, I have the page frame with its thick outline selected, and I'll choose Object, Convert Outline to Object. Now I can activate Interactive Fill, and fill the page border. 
The Smart Fill tool is used to fill in an enclosed area and also creates new objects. In the property bar, I can use a default fill color or specify the color and specify outline width and color as well. Clicking within an enclosed area applies the solid fill and outlines. Each filled area is a new object, which can be seen in the objects docker. Selecting and moving these objects shows that the original objects remain intact. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on fill tools in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.